YouTube, this is Miles, Paradise in a Pot, coming from Las Vegas, Nevada. How's everyone doing today? Hey, that's good to hear. So today in our video, I'm going to talk about watering, that mysterious thing that we all get told to do different things with different things in different ways, and yeah, watering. <laughs> So if you like that kind of content, why don't you go ahead, hit the subscribe button, because all we talk about on this channel are houseplant kind of things. And if you like this video, please like this video. And come on, let's go. So today, how I water my plants is the first thing I ask myself, does this plant need a drink? I stick my finger in the soil. I feel, is it dry? No, it's moist. Doesn't need a drink. If it's dry, then maybe I'll stick my finger a little deeper in the soil. I'll look at the plant leaves. Some plants, like say a syndapsis, for example, will start to curl its leaves to let you know it needs a drink. A pothos will wilt to let you know it needs a drink. And sometimes it's okay to let these plants show you. Some plants aren't quite so forgiving though, so beware. There are different ways, different things you might consider when watering each plant. So let's get into this. Um, the first thing is, is, if I decide the plant needs water, I decide how am I gonna water it? What type of plant is this I'm watering? What are its water requirements? And I'm gonna say the uh, different and the different ways I water. So the first way I would say I water most of my plants, especially if they're aeroids, is I take them to the sink, I rinse them off, I flush them down, and I let the water run out of the bottom of the pot. And I usually do this once the pot's almost completely dry. I wouldn't say bone dry, and I don't want that peat, if I'm using peat, to be uh, hydrophobic, so. Don't wait too long, but like, you know, when the plant starts giving you signals, give it a drink. Not all plants, however, are best watered this way. Some plants, like succulents, really don't like to sit in a really big pot of wet water for any period of time whatsoever. So with those, I would do uh, what I call as top water as needed. So um, like my string of hearts here, I give this thing a little water every day. It dries out constantly. It's like 100 feet long and it feels like it just puts out a thousand leaves every day. And it always feels like and looks like it needs a drink in here. I don't know if you can see it in shop, but it's pretty long. And this thing's full of flowers at the bottom and it's doing really well. And I do just love it. But I don't find it easy to take that to the sink and water it down. I don't wash it down. I may give it a little find it easy to take that to the sink and water it down. I don't wash it down. Um, I may give it a little with my mister uh, and let it get a little moisture down its vines and sometimes I'll do that to soak. I, when I mist my plants I'm not really misting the leaves. I'm misting the soil to kind of saturate that top little bit and I know that kind of goes against what people think about when it comes to fungus gnats. Uh, I don't have that problem. I use systemic poison to prevent fungus gnats and I keep my plants uh, really on top of that situation. So when I do the little spray watering, it doesn't really allow, because Las Vegas is so, not so much as to, it poured for like four hours through the day, which some plants, they just don't like it. And that's another thing I will say about watering. Each plant has its own uh, responses and signals. So. Um, some of the things I might say here works for some plants, but not all plants. So take that into consideration. And that's what I'm trying to cover here, all the different ways or things you think about when you do water. Some people like to also, like if I have uh, an orchid or my Hoya now that are starting to take off in my collection here, they're in a really barky, kind of chunky mix that yeah, the water's great, 
when I water it there and I'm sure the roots absorb up really quick and the leaves feel really thick and, and supple so I know that this one doesn't need any water right now and I can kind of look at the uh, mix also which is another you know indicator you can look at it sometimes and tell if it's dry or if it's still kind of moist so be observant take all observations use all five of your senses and I also like to give it a smell this has got that uh, new mix that I've been using that's got that cedar in it <coughs> mix also which is another you know indicator you can look at it sometimes and tell if it's dry or if it's still kind of moist so be observant take it just smells really good anyhow with these guys i will take them to the sink and put them into a little tray i have the tray right here so i'll put it into a tray you can see there's a little lip on that tray and that tray will uh hold water for me and i'll let these guys because i'll put them all together in the tray fill up the little tray with all my little Hoya, and I'll let them soak for maybe 15, 20 minutes to really let that bark uh, take on the water so that it'll hold on to it and retain it for the week or two, maybe not two weeks, but week to nine days usually on watering these guys. I don't water them that often, although uh, with the winter being here, I do find that I'm using a fan with a lot more airflow. I have it turned off right now so that I can film this video, but if I have it, uh, usually it's on, because this is the space heater that basically keeps my whole home warm. Uh, and I keep my home at about 73 degrees, so a little warmer than a lot of people like, but I run cold, so I like it a little warmer. These guys still, with all that breeze that comes through this room, they don't dry out that quickly. And I find that the Hoyas really do like an airflow, side note, air. Uh, but today on water, yeah, I'll let those guys soak for maybe 20 minutes or so, and then I'll take them all out of here and then put them on top of the tray so that the water will just run off and really let them drain well. And then I'll take them and bring them back to wherever they live, their little homes, this little Avavada, which I'm just loving right now because the leaves are so shimmery and pretty and this newest leaf is just so gorgeous. And it looks like it's giving me a new growth point, although I'd have to pull out a magnifying glass for you guys to see that. But anyhow, it's soaking them. Yeah, absolutely. And then there's the uh, good old fashioned bottom watering where people will take a bowl of water and set their plants inside of it. And I understand you do this to try to keep the fungus gnats at bay with this so that the top layer of the soil doesn't get moist. I however don't always feel that every plant necessarily needs the entire pot of soil to get wet or soaked. So I feel that this could sometimes be detrimental to different plants. I do know that some plants do better this method though. Like I understand a lot of people have peperomias that they bottom soak water them and they do a lot better with not getting root rot on these. And I'm actually gonna be trying that with some new peperomia and that'll be a video coming up about uh, some experiments with peperomia. It's not been my favorite plant, but my thing is now I'm kind of determined. I wanna figure it out. I wanna make sure that if I'm gonna be advising you guys on house plants, that I'm figuring out what it is I'm doing wrong and start doing it right so that I can pass on to you guys what it is uh, that, that we need to do so that we can all be successful because gosh, I hate to bring a plant home and then have it die on me because of some ignorance on my part. But anyhow, that's a sidetrack and we'll get into that more later on as the new year comes on. Then there's uh, different types of water that you can use when you're watering your plants. One of the first types of water I usually go to is this fish tank right behind me. I have these empty jugs right now that I fill up with aquarium water to save when I change the water for the fish to water my plants with. I find this water is, and see it's got an F on it for fish water so that I know it's not distilled water because it is recycling distilled water jugs because I try to use these to keep them clean. Although after a few uses of fish water, I end up tossing these just because the fish water kind of makes it kind of smell not great. I use this for all the plants. It's a great fertilizer. It's really uh, low uh, nitrates, but the plants all respond well to it. I think there's also a lot of uh, microorganisms in the aquarium water that help the plants thrive and grow and maybe give some missing nutrients. I'm not a biologist. I can't tell you that as a fact. I'm just telling you 
how I feel about what fish water, aquarium water does in the plants. The one thing I will say about fish water is do not use this if you have sphagnum moss involved in the situation because sphagnum moss can and most likely will develop like an algae, a weird algae that comes from the fish water on the sphagnum moss that's just gross. So don't do it. Uh, otherwise, I'd say go with the fish water. Water all your plants with that if you can. That being said, there are a few plants I would not use the fish water on, uh, unfortunately, because these plants just don't like tap water. And I use tap water when I change the water out in my aquarium. So that water has all the minerals, the fluorides, whatever, you know, is in the water before it even goes in there. The only thing I remove before I put that water into the aquarium is the chlorine. And I have a product called uh, Dechlor. It's a little blue bottle that dechlorinates the water. Here, I'll grab it real quick. Dechlor. And this little bottle costs, yeah, as you can see, $5.98. It was really reasonable. Uh, a drop of that in a gallon of water will definitely take away the chlorine for the fish. Uh, and, and side note, I use it also for uh, watering my plants. When I water my plants, uh, unless I'm taking them to the sink to wash them down, which I, if I can, I will take a plant to the sink and I will wash it down with that uh, sprayer or I'll take it to the shower and I'll spray it down because plants get dusty and Las Vegas is very, very dusty. We have a lot of desert and a lot of dust and a lot of sand. So I'm constantly washing down these plants to keep their leaves clean and pristine so that they can do their best photosynthesis and give me more new fresh leaves. So with the tap water, yeah, I try to dechlorinate it unless of course I'm giving it straight out of the sink like you see here with this parlor palm. Now, the other type of water you can use is a, a distilled water. And I have uh, some distilled water right here. It's just a gallon jug of distilled water. It costs me like 89 cents at the store for this jug. And it, uh, I use the distilled water for my Calathea and I use it for my uh, Dracaena, the little bamboo plant in the bathroom because distilled water doesn't leave marks on glass as much uh, as it evaporates. So you don't get those lines as the water dissipates like you do if you were to use tap water, which is a mineral buildup. So there's no minerals in the distilled water whatsoever. It's just pure H2O. And the plants uh, respond just fine to it. I also use it when I uh, put water into my spray bottle because in my spray bottle, I will you know sometimes spray down to wash down a leaf. If I'm trying to take an Instagram photo and I want something to be extra shiny or extra clean, I'll rinse it down and let the dust kind of drip down into the plant, whatever, because I kind of feel like maybe there's some nutrients to it too. I don't know. I, I, I'm just trying to recycle everything. And then I'll wipe down the leaf to take that photo if I need to make it look really nice. Because yeah, I don't want to take photos of dusty plants. Nobody wants to see a dusty, dirty plant. And I have a few, especially the ZZ plants. Why are they such dust magnets? I feel like, are they like the powerhouse of air purifiers? Because they grab all the dust they can. And if that's the case, do I need more ZZ plants? So anyhow, that's distilled water. And I, like I say, I use it for my, uh, my Calatheas and I use it for my bottles and I use it for my little spot waterer which I had here somewhere, maybe I was spot watering, uh, only because whatever I spot water that way there, like with my propagations, again, so I don't get the hard water lines, I'll fill my propagations with that because it's really easy to get in there. Because a lot of times the propagation tubes are really thin, so it's hard to pour water in there without having to pull the whole thing out. So it makes it just really convenient. Temperature of your water, I would say most important is to try to keep it a nice, lukewarm bath water, shower temperature, something that you're comfortable with. Nothing hot, nothing warm, nothing that's gonna make your skin red if you're spraying your plants down. A lot of times what I'll do is I'll take water and I'll just fill this pitcher and you can see this pitcher's almost empty because I use this pitcher to fill my watering jug to go around and give spot watering to those things that I just give a little bit of water to. And there are some plants talking about when you do water that you don't wanna flush through say that maybe it's a plant that's a little bit recovering. So it's in a pot that's perhaps a little bigger than the root system is. And you don't wanna flood that pot because then you risk the chance of having root rot. 
You could always downsize the plant to a smaller pot, but sometimes when a plant's stressed, it's best just to leave it where it is. So in this instance, instead of taking that plant and soaking it, I would just assess that plant day by day and as it needs water, just give it a little spot water right at the base of the plant itself so that the plant gets what it needs without filling the whole pot with water and creating a situation of possible root rot. So that's what I have to say about watering plants as far as how much to water, when to water. Again, your plants should be able to tell you when they need water and check multiple signs. See, you know, feel the leaves. If the leaves feel plump and firm and you, uh, like on some of the plants where you can do that little taco test, like especially the Hoya, if you can squeeze that leaf and you can make that full taco shell touch, then that plant probably could use a drink. If it's wrinkling, you can sometimes see like with a cactus, especially like a Christmas cactus, or I have this rat tail cactus. I can see when it starts to wrinkle up and I feel that, oh gosh, all right, it's time to give this thing a watering. And again, with a cactus, because I have such a uh, high draining mix on that, I can just wash it down and spray it through. And it holds moisture nicely for probably about a day and then it dries out well. And I think the cactus really absorbs what it needs, like it's built to do. And it's doing really well. So I would say just, you know, go plant by plant and assess how does this plant need watering? What kind of water does it need to thrive? And is there something I need to do to the water that is possibly killing my plant? So removing the chlorine, I think, is a great way to help not shock plants. Temperature, cold water, hot water, that will shock the roots of your plants. And you have to remember, the roots are some of the most delicate bits of your plants, and you really want to take good care of them. So do so by starting off by giving them good water. All right, guys, this is all I'm going to have to talk about today in watering your plants. Again, if you like this kind of video, please give me a thumbs up. If you want to see more content about house plants, how to care for them, and what to do with them, please go ahead and subscribe to my channel. I'm trying to get to 200 by the first of the year. If I do, I have a big surprise for everybody. I'm hoping that we do get there because if I have uh, 200 subscribers by uh, January 1st, 2022, it's a lot of twos, two, 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 two. Um, I'm going to start a new series. So let's go ahead and get me up to 200 followers. Also, if you're on Instagram, make sure you go ahead and follow me on Instagram. You can see my description in the bio. And if you'd like to buy me a cup of coffee, I'd surely be grateful. I put my Venmo down there, uh, two, three dollars. That'd be awesome. If you want to uh, buy me a plant, tell me what kind of plant to go buy. I'll go find it. I'll take you with. I'll make sure we journey all over the city to find me a plant. Just let me know. I'm here to give you guys plenty content, information, expand your knowledge, and expand your plant world coming from Las Vegas. So, hey guys, uh, this will also be the last video before Christmas, so I want to wish you all a Merry Christmas if you celebrate Christmas. Otherwise, have a happy holiday season, and we'll see you again before the new year. Bye!